Hello and good evening to every serious CLAT aspirant present here today, right on time, quite punctual. I really appreciate that. Hi, I'm Anuja and I'm going to take you forward in this session today. So today's session is one of the many in the series that we are doing, which is called CLAT Sprint Session. So Sprint is that this, this straw, short uh, span of uh, exercise that you do so that you can prepare yourself for a longer marathon session, right? That's the idea. So you've been doing a small sprint sessions of different subjects today and today it's the day for English language sprint session. So what is the plan? The plan is that we'll be solving RCs. We'll be solving in total three RC passages today. Of course, diverse because so is the nature of CLAT RC reading. They are easy because CLAT is an easy paper. It's not a tough paper at all. Believe me when I say that. You just have to be present in the moment, concentrate on what you're reading, be observant. And that is why I strongly recommend that all of you sit with a notepad today so that when we tackle each paragraph, you can take notes. Okay, let's do that. So students, what's the modus operandi that we are following today? We are first um, taking out time for reading. So for example, this first RC has got one, two, three, four paragraphs, four small paragraphs, pretty standard length for a CLAT RC. And then it has questions, different kind of kinds of questions. So I'll be taking you forward at a very standard, gentle pace, not, uh, not too fast, not too slow. You really have to be with me here. And I will first give you time to read. Once you are done reading, uh, we'll begin the discussion. Okay, so we'll do it first for the first RC, second for the second RC, and thirdly for the third RC, and that's it. That's the plan. Okay, so let's get started. I have tried my best to include different kinds of questions so that you can get as much revision and exposure as possible. All the very best, hoping that you'll get a very good accuracy today and I'll help you with that. Let's start reading the first RC. Students, here for your convenience, each line has been numbered so that you can or you and I both can do easy references. So we are reading from line number one to line number 14. That means we are reading para one and para two. Let's start. I hope everybody has read the first paragraph. Let's do a quick explanation of what we have read so far. We are reading about a place. It's very important to set the critical context as soon as you begin reading. 
so we are talking about a place called annawadi it is near the airport as i can understand from here and there is a very interesting line here they say this is the place this is the stretch where new india and old india collided and made new india late now i'm thinking i'm thinking to myself because that's the point of comprehension you are supposed to question what you are reading so what is uh, the meaning of new india what is the meaning of old india and what does this even mean that new india and old india collided and made new india late now i don't have to use my imagination to get the answer because the answer is right here let's read further so shoppers in suvs <clears throat> rich people right and they are honking furiously angrily at the bicycle delivery boys who are uh, coming from a chicken shop so that means when they are saying old india made new india late that means this is where the lives of the rich and the poor sort of uh, coincided and the lives of the poor impacted the lives of the rich okay let's move on so annawadi itself was nothing special in the context of the slums of mumbai every house was off kilter there is a question which is asking me the meaning of off kilter now if i know it that's great that means i have good lexical resource but if i don't let me use the context so every house was off kilter so less off kilter looked like straight i think they are trying to say that every house was somehow skewed and if it is less skewed then it looks straight that could that's what it could mean okay uh, sewage and sickness looked like life the slum had been settled in 1991 so some background some history this is a slum area annawadi settled in 1991 how by whom by a band of laborers who came from tamil nadu to repair a runway that's why they came here and the work got completed but they decided to stay near the airport why exactly because they thought it has got tantalizing construction possibilities that means very attractive construction possibilities and that obviously means that there could be opportunities career advancement opportunities or at least surviving opportunities for these workers as well so this decided to stay uh, so in an area with little unclaimed space a sodden snake fill look at this this is how bad it was um sodden snake filled bit of brush land across the street from the international terminal seemed the least bad place to live so just think about the options they had the alternatives they had if this seems the least bad place to live how worse it was anyway now other people considered the spot too wet to be habitable but these hard working tamilians they set to work they step by step did everything they could and they made that place livable they had a settlement the process is described here residents of neighboring slums provided its name what name annawadi it's the land of annas and we all know anna means an older brother so that time there were less respectful terms that were being used for tamil migrant workers but after this miraculous transformation of that marshy land people started looking at tamilians in a positive way in a respectful way so these were the poor citizens who you could say look at this usage they could summon solid land from a bog that's what motivation could do that's what hard work could do from a bog from a marsh they could summon they could call a solid land so that's why they earned deference this is an important word for us which means respect remember deferential tone which is a very respectful tone so this is what we have read so far a place called annawadi its background where it is and how it basically looks the uh, the background story how it started and uh, how it was created let's move on so first you are trying to understand and then i am helping you when i am helping you you are supposed to check 
the gap if there is a gap then you are supposed to understand why and if there is no gap then you can congratulate yourself that you understood everything beautifully please understand that today we are not doing a, a speed assessment that's why i am not giving you questions to solve in a um, specified limit of time we are we are just doing comprehension assessment so i'm helping you to see where you lag please read para 3 and para रियलाइज The, they these people here have made economic advancement because officially no one is considered poor now by the official benchmarks at least however there is a lot of debate the about the gap between the official benchmarks and the real real situation but anyway and uh, these are the people who are who are freed who are who are free from poverty now so they did get economic liberalization you could say that but anyway the situation is not really great you can read what's happening here and you'll get an idea so the purpose of this text is to inform us about annawadi and give us a bit a bit of background now we are ready to handle the questions so i would like to know your answer to question number 1 what is the meaning of off kilter in your opinion be very careful so remember that line that every house looked off kilter and less off kilter looked almost straight right but i don't really know off kilter means what was it was it zigzag was it was it curved but curved in what sense so i don't really know i just know that this was not straight if it was not straight then it was out of balance but how exactly out of balance how did it lose its balance that i don't know so was it zigzag or was it curved i might be taking my chances if i uh, choose those two options that's why i'm going with out of balance so that is the meaning of off kilter now it's time for question number 2 which of the following does the author imply what 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 hint is he giving so remember authors always imply and readers infer readers infer but it's the same thing so what does the author imply when she says made new india late we paid attention to this line this was a beautiful line
please read all the options to make a good choice. I am sure you are quick to notice that there are many options which are not supported by the passage. For example, the first one which says frequent accidents. Where were they mentioned? They were not mentioned. Flights couldn't take off on time. This was also not mentioned and newly arrived. We were not talking about newly arrived people at all. So the answer is C, the rich. That was the new India. They thought that Annawadi is an impediment. It's an hindrance. It's an obstacle, something that slows them down because that's where smooth flow of traffic can't happen. People on their bicycles come along. OK, moving on to question number three. According to the author, why did Annawadi seem like the least bad place to live to these laborers? In normal circumstances, it is no problem if you want to refer back to the passage. So option A says there was a lot of unclaimed space. Now look at this in an area with sorry in an area with little unclaimed space. Remember little a little a little is at least something but little is almost nothing. So if it's an area with little unclaimed space. Option A can't possibly be true, which is saying uh, they wanted to be here because there was a lot of unclaimed space. No, sir, there wasn't. They wanted to eat weeds. I'm sure they that was not the motivation. Sometimes something is a consequence, but we think of it as a cause and that's not right because the laborers were respected. No, no, they were not. Remember, there were less dis disrespectful terms which were very common for these people. So the answer is D. It was the vicinity um, from the airport that that made them think that this is the least bad place. It has tantalizing construction possibilities. Hence work from them work for them. Question number four students. Which of the following is inconsistent with the information in the passage above? So inconsistent means you have to go contrary to whatever was mentioned there, which goes against the information in the passage. Please read. So we deliberately read the passage quite slowly so that you can remember that D was written in para one itself. Sewage was common in Annawadi, remember? So yes, uh, Abdul felt Abdul was mentioned in the last paragraph that his social status was higher than at least those people who had to resort to this. So this was also correct. Anna was the most widely used term. No, I think this is what is inconsistent? We were just discussing this that Anna became famous after these laborers created something so miraculous, but earlier there were less respectful terms that were common. Okay, but yes, this is consistent when the toil, the hard work they put to convert this place into a habitable area. That's when they were given respect. Time for the last question of this set. Choose the correct set of missing words indicated by X and Y. So just remember the options and I will take you back to the sentence sentence 23. Give doesn't. This is what what tense is this give doesn't. This is simple present and if you're using doesn't that means my subject is singular gave won't won't is future. 
okay and gave is past i think this would most probably not be correct because there has to be some consistency half your half of your sentence in past and half of it in future that doesn't sound about right give and hadn't hadn't is usually used with past perfect and give is in simple present so i see a similar problem with these two and d gave and didn't this is in the past tense so let's go back to sentence number 23 so that we can decide which word fits here is your sentence they something those slum dwellers who something fry rats and eat weeds like abdul a felt sense of upward mobility i think they are talking about people who are frying rats and eating weeds they are making people like abdul feel that at least their situation is a little bit better so they gave these people they gave those slum dwellers who who uh, didn't fry rats and eat weeds this sense of upward mobility okay so we are going with tense consistency we are using the same tense throughout that is why not these two and we are talking about multiple people so doesn't want to work it is singular the answer is d so we had one question on grammar one on contextual vocabulary then we had interpretation of a particular line which is usually asked if it's a good line good usage then it is usually asked and we also had a few information related questions where there were multiple options and you might have to refer back to the passage but all in all level of difficulty of this rc the rc one today was easy and if at all you might want to might want to call it maybe for some questions moderate but definitely not difficult so if the lod is like this we are at least hoping for a 3 or 4 correct score if it is not like that then you should ask yourself where is the gap and that is why i am taking it slowly and i am explaining everything to you okay so i hope you are ready to move on to the second rc of the day let's go this one let me just give you an overview has a lot of dialogues and it will not be very tough for you to read because again a short one and this one has got a true question a, a particular information question another which one is true question which one is true question and missing set of words so we can always go back to the sentence a vocabulary question perilous and again which should be true title we are always worried about how to get a give a proper title so here is a title question okay but before we do any of these we should read the text let's start all the very best please take notes to simplify your reading the moment you read the first sentence it is clear that this
cannot be the real heaven if there is one this can't be the real heaven heaven must be a place that they are talking about they say if you're a girl in heaven you don't get out much why why don't you get out much because you have too much work to do too much too many chores to do too many eyes watching you and for joy it's even less she goes out even less and when she leaves then what happens she leaves a fortress a kingdom she built herself what does this mean in a fortress you are at least safe but when she is leaving uh, she is leaving that safe space comparatively safer space because going further we see the problems that she is facing when she goes out at the post office clerks don't pay attention to her or they ask her to do disgusting things so i i can sense discrimination here maybe some kind of harassment as well only one vendor in the market sells her vegetables and that too for twice the cost so that's again discrimination okay and on bus women are asking her to go to the back near the men's section this must give me an idea of what they are dealing with the section that's all perilous murmurs uh malicious grasps grasp and grope so malicious mal which means bad has a negative connotation and so does perilous peril means dangerous peril is danger so perilous is dangerous and malicious is something which is harmful and then a particular incident when she uh, went to the health worker and health worker told her that she was underweight and there was this incident of iron pills distribution let's read what exactly happened here i hope uh, this poignant description this emotional description is sensitizing you towards the problem that is uh, is the intention of this text so uh, what happened in the hospital there i guess you do understand that this person joy was born as a guy but growing up realized that uh, he relates being a girl and that's why changed the name from anand to joy but people are not understanding at all this nurse is saying that you guys are scheming and plotting and um her mother had to step up for her saying that no we are not scheming she is a woman that's how she feels and uh, she's definitely better than you are and look at this line joy laundered from somewhere didn't she that means uh, her mother was strong could step up uh, against the world okay now now that you have read everything let's start solving questions let's begin with question number 6 which of the following is most likely to be true please read all the options don't be in a hurry author did not think that selvi aunty was a weak person in fact 
he thought of selvi aunty as a very strong person that is obvious joy is a transgender boy who was born a girl no the opposite transgender girl born a boy anand the author is not a transgender girl right so simple question just that they are trying to confuse us by making very similar options question number 7 Why does the author say that girls from heaven do not go out much? Why? Remember the very first line, the opening remark of this RC. They have too much work to do, too many people keeping an eye. So a very simple, just a simple detail question. Question number eight: Which of the following can we infer to be true? you read the entire thing about the nurse that particular nurse what would you call her unsympathetic very sympathetic not at all very sympathetic not at all she didn't care who received it apathetic no if she didn't care who received it and if she handed it to anyone then she should have handed it to joy as well but no it is it wasn't like that and this was not the case so you will only say that she was unsympathetic moving on to sorry question number 9 again tell which in which sentence should be true you might be confused between two options that's okay that's usually the case if you're thinking about option d remember it has a tone of finality it seems like a conclusion thing which says joy never left heaven do you have that information you don't really have that information but you do know that joy learned it from somewhere didn't she so she learned it from selvi aunty how to stand up to people why would she want to be like the nurse the uh, nurse was very unsympathetic and we had no information about option c moving on to question number 10 you have to complete the sentence so the answer is going to be um, let's let's just go back to that sentence so yeah only one vendor at the market ho sakta hai because this is a place sells her vegetables and that too um that to twice the cost okay so let's see what are the options that we have here under twice the cost shouldn't be the case for the market shouldn't be the case in twice the cost no so this should be a at twice the cost at the market moving on this is a simple prepositional question a vocabulary question the meaning of the word perilous remember peril is danger so perilous is something which is dangerous that means it is full of risk when you say thrill seeking and adventurous it has a positive connotation it is it is like a sport that you would want to do but perilous has a negative connotation question number 12 tell which one is correct all these uh, true statements are basically related to the theme of what you are reading so in all the three options here we see a common problem which is called hasty generalization you are generalizing you are giving a blanket statement which is not supported by the text so if you say many transgender girls are calling them joy how do you know you just read about one no healthcare professional is sympathetic we don't know and they're always malnourished i don't know since every option has a problem i will go with none of the above and students now time for the final title question so if you focus on the main idea of the passage you will know
in this passage author never explained how to leave heaven in fact we don't even know if joy ever left heaven so this can't be right from anand to joy is a title suitable for a transformation process a journey from a to b how did that happen and that part was untouched transgender people and malnourishment they did mention malnourishment in in the case of joy but that wasn't the main focus the main focus was to sensitize you to talk about the problem the plight that these people face in our country because they do not get the requisite support okay so whenever you have to form uh, the suitable title please remember that it's a summary question it's a theme detection question you cannot say that this was also there because obviously every option that they are mentioning must be there you just have to tell which is the most predominant message which is present throughout that should be the title okay now good job if you are almost two thirds there because we are going to do one more rc today and if you do well here i think um, that's it a good session a good clat sprint session so this one has two paragraphs here and just a few um, paragraphs here and then we will have one simple very simple vocabulary word vocabulary question uh which one is grammatically incorrect so okay um one statement by biju kumar and one statement by mr subramanyam uh, i'm sorry we uh, couldn't underline it earlier but i'm going to underline it uh, for you now so this is the statement which is by biju kumar and there is one more statement it's very easy to identify because they are in quotations so yes this should be it we are talking about the statement by subramanyam so you have to tell which one is grammatically incorrect not supported that means you'll have to read the passage then only you will know uh this incident severam and shivram why has it been quoted so again read the passage and if you have to find something which is fully supported by the passage that means you have to go with the theme okay so all the very best this will be the last set that we are doing today and i hope that you do very well let's begin reading everyone so what are we dealing with we are dealing with the steps to tackle invasive species and how are we going to do that so there is an example of how cypress is dealing with lionfish they are culling it basically killing it and uh, kerala government is dealing with african catfish and how are they dealing with it the effort is not very successful this person biju kumar says that if we want to handle this situation we need early detection this is one of the best methods because if we cannot detect early and if the infestation is too much then it becomes very difficult okay let's move on you were talking about the statement by sub mr subramanyam and 
I think everything that's in the quotation will be his statement. they are talking about the problems of the system they are saying uh, we need to educate hobbyists the people who are keeping these species just as a hobby and also shopkeepers so this particular example tells you how uh, ignorant even the shopkeepers are uh, severam is being called shivram and that tells you that this lack of knowledge it goes everywhere it also goes to hobbies so hobbies don't really know anything but they just buy it and then what happens uh, they can't control the situation they dispose the species properly and that's where it becomes a problem and other more common other as compared to hobbies other more common problem is with breeders breeders are also uh, not able to afford proper fencing or filtering and that's why the entire problem becomes a menace let us begin dealing with the questions question number 14 which of the following is the correct meaning of the word quarantine i'm sure we know this word already So what happens when you quarantine something? Are you breeding it in captivity um, on its own? No, that's not what quarantine is. Are you trying to immunize that species? It's not about the immunity of that species. You don't want to affect others. So that's why answer is D. It's a restriction on movement because you don't want to spread the disease to other, other people. Question number 15, the two statements that we read, Mr. Biju Kumar and Mr. Subramanyam, which one is grammatically incorrect? Let me take you back. There is no problem with this statement, but there is a very common problem here. The difference between it's and it is. They were trying to say it is rather difficult and there was a requirement of this it's not it's its tail dog and its tail not that one so the statement attributed to Biju kumar that one is grammatically incorrect and it's a very simple common error question number 16 which of the following is not supported something that goes contrary to the passage. So it's not properly regulated and that's why regulation of the fish trade is necessary. This is supported. Hobby is inadvertently. That means they don't plan it. They're not really doing it uh, deliberately, but they inadvertently aid, aid in multiplying these invasive fish species. Yes, this is also supported. But all ornamental fishes are invasive. This is a generalization which is not supported and this was said this was was mr biju kumar was saying that we need um we need to detect them before they become very dominant second last question penultimate question of the day what do we learn from this case severam shivram Is it about Indianizing something? No, it's more than that. It speaks of the problem and the problem is of ignorance. People who are selling, they also do not know the correct names. If they don't even know the names, how can we expect they know more? Last question, a statement which is fully supported.
remember the last paragraph we read where it was clearly written that breeders are a bigger cause as compared to hobbyist so this is fully supported but there was no comparison see in the first paragraph we were talking about the example of uh, lionfish and catfish but there was no comparison between the two which one is easier or who is doing it better cypress or kerala they are not um compared and shopkeepers are not really deceiving fish buyers they don't really know so ignorance shouldn't be called deception okay so that's it for uh, today's sprint session students total we solved 18 questions today and i hope i sincerely hope that you got 12 plus right which will be a great score uh if you've got 15 plus right that is a fantastic score but anyway the purpose of today's session was to tell you what is the gap and to discuss the strategy so we not only solved questions but we discussed the strategy of every question type that we dealt with and i i strongly recommend that you go back to your notes to your previous classes to the sessions that we did together and please remember how to deal with a particular question type so that you can proactively uh gather data whatever is required for that question always rooting for you guys i wish you all the very best please try to evade the stress and do your level best in preparing yourself okay thank you so much for being patient throughout i hope you had a good time and i'm going to see you very soon again bye bye all the best thank you